Hi, this video is about a magnetic levitator project done as part of the feedback control systems class at the University of Georgia in spring semester 2019. The group members are Sam, Matab, Eric, and Matt. The goal of this project was to produce an electromagnetic levitator capable of suspending a lightweight metal object a small distance below the magnetic solenoid. Magnetic levitation is used in many practical applications. Maglev trains, for example, use a system of magnets to control the train's stability and speed. In our levitator, the levitated object is attracted by an electromagnet placed above the sphere. However, the challenge lies in controlling the position and magnetic force so that a small disturbance does not affect the equilibrium position. The magnetic force must be controlled by the current through an electromagnet, overcome gravity, and pull the object upward. We decided to accomplish this using a Hall sensor to detect the object's distance from the solenoid and an analog circuit to increase or decrease current as a corrective action. We first began by constructing a support structure in which the circuit and magnetic solenoid would be mounted. This was built out of wood since it is inexpensive, lightweight, and most importantly rigid. The rigidity of the structure is important because any sort of movement would introduce additional difficulties with stabilizing the system, so it's worth it to overbuild a little bit. Next, we tested the Hall sensor's response to a magnetic field at various distances in order to determine where to mount the sensor and the transfer function of the sensor. We tested at equally spaced distances, plotted them using Excel, and fitted a second order line of best fit. It's second order because the magnetic field decreases exponentially with distance. Then we liberated a power supply from an old PC to supply power for the solenoid, sensor, and op amps. We figured this would be the best option since it could offer all the different voltage sources we would need and provide enough current to power the solenoid. Next, we researched the necessary components and configuration to build a circuit to drive the solenoid. We implemented a diode to protect the solenoid and direct current to the bipolar junction transistor. After building the circuit and confirming that our driver circuit works, we began designing the controller. We decided to pursue an analog controller and began with a basic idea of what we wanted to accomplish with our circuit. We added an op amp with resistors to our driver circuit to create a loop gain and therefore a corrective action between the hall sensor and the solenoid. However, once we assembled this and tested it, we realized this would not work. We had one op amp to function as the proportional controller, but we needed to add another op amp with a capacitor to create a differentiating controller. In this configuration, we have a PD controller driving our analog circuit. So as you can see, we were able to get our solenoid to work and attract a magnetic object, but the control aspect is where we fell short. If we were to attempt to do this project again in the future, I would recommend a digital approach instead of an analog one. The Hall sensor and PID controller modules are actually readily available on the Arduino and would simplify the construction of the controller by a lot. With the analog method, it was doable, but trying to figure out how to design and build an analog controller using the breadboard is rather difficult and not intuitive for a lot of us. The transistor also played a, a large role in why uh, the controller aspect wasn't able to work. The transistor heats pretty easily and a lot of that energy is dissipated as heat. It was also too small for our specific circuit and we didn't have adequate time to source and use an appropriate one. 
We also weren't completely sure which resistant values to use for the controller. So the role that the resistor plays in the controller is to determine the gain for the different op amps, but we weren't sure how to select the proper resistance and the capacitance for it beyond that.